Okay, here's another clip uh, of one-on-one -on -one advantage. This time it will be through the post. You'll see a post double team coming from here. This is in WA, the Las Vegas Aces. So we'll take a look at the full clip here before we uh, slow it down and break it down a little bit. So the first thing I want to comment on here is they go into a ball screen and uh, the defense will switch this, right? So, you know, in our modern game of basketball, the, the standard post up has left the game, especially at the NBA level, not so much at the college level, not so much at the WNBA level. But, you know, this is a reason why it's still very important to throw the ball into the post, I believe. Um, you know, it might not be something you do all the time. Depends on your points per possession, obviously, and the person who is the post player. But how many times, Ed, how do we see teams that as soon as the ball looks like it's getting thrown into the post and it looks like there's a mismatch off the switch? I mean, look at the weak side defender. She's already starting to double this while the ball is in the air, right? So if you have an opportunity ever, whether it's on a pick and roll, whether it's on a post up, whether it's on a flare screen, whatever it is that you're doing, or uh, even if the team wants to press you, trap you, if you ever get a chance to bring two people to the ball and create a double team, like you've already created a large advantage for your basketball team. So just something really to start here for coaches that are watching this. This is a reason to still throw the ball into a post with a good post player who's able to pass out of a double team because defenses will still overreact and go to double this right away on the catch. So that's the first thing I wanted to point out. Yeah, I mean, as the ball's in the air here, if you look right here as the ball's in the air, all 10 eyes defensively are on the ball pre-catch, right? So like just the entry has gotten you an advantage. Um, and then also, even if you like think about this pre-pass now, one of the reasons I think on-ball screens are not as effective or as efficient relative to how much we're used is because we expect the action to be something with the ball handler. This is an example of an on-ball screen getting you an advantage. And what I mean by that is you couldn't just go post up your big girl here on a smaller defender just for free. Like the on-ball screen got you this. And it may not be a traditional look off an on-ball screen, pick and roll, pick and pop, those kind of things. But the whole point of an on-ball screen is to create advantage. And that can show up in countless forms if you're aware of it and you're just really willing to use them and not kind of close minded to, oh, I'm hoping to get this advantage, any kind of advantage. And here it is. Here's one of them. And Matt, if you go back, just one little nuance thing when this thing started, that, that I want all players to know, don't rush the right thing. So watch this here. She comes on the screen. The ball handler is going to know what she has. But you see how she, she brings it out to create more space for the pass? A lot of players pick that ball up and try to force it in, and they don't have the angle. You don't have to rush the right thing. If you see it, sometimes you, know, you waiting may draw the double even pre-catch or pre-pass. That's fine, too. But she took her time, retreat dribbled or exit dribbled to get a better angle, giving the post time to get the seal. See, she comes out with it. That little thing is really important. A lot of players force the right pass at the wrong angle, and it's just it doesn't matter at that point. Great point. You know, the next thing I think is so important is that she uses a reverse pivot here in the post. And, you know, maybe she knows that they've been coming to double her in the post all game. It seems like she has an awareness. Maybe she's just a smart player and has that awareness. Maybe this is just in her package for mid post package. Uh, but the opportunity, the ability for her to reverse pivot here for out of the post is huge because when the double comes, now it gives her vision of the entire floor. There's not a pass on the floor that she cannot make now that she's reverse pivoted in the post here. Yeah. And, and, you know, Matt, like we've talked about so many times, but, you know, it's important. That's why we say it so much is look at the spacing here, right? The second she reverse pivots, she doesn't have to, like, hope where to go with the ball. She doesn't have to guess. The spacing, the, like, I don't know who this lady is, and obviously she's a good player, but she's a post player, so the chances are she doesn't have the Steph Curry kind of vision or, or passing ability, but you don't have to, right? If the spacing is there, everyone becomes a better passer, right? right. Because now it's just a simple decision. You just see where the space is. And look for a teammate, I mean, look at the vacuum this basically triple team does, right? Look at the spacing it creates by having the triple team the double come over, but even the help down, this is just filling space. 
absolutely. And it's so it's so great. I mean, like you said, there's essentially essentially a triple team in terms of the spacing where the defense is. The other thing I love about this cut is, is you know you know we talk about a lot. Just because you're alone doesn't mean you're open, right? right? Now, this is a good this is probably a good passer, but um, you can't assume that in this situation that she's going to be able to make the skip pass through a double team across court, and make it on time on target to. Um, before the closeout comes from the weak side without getting it stolen. Can't always assume that. So that's one reason why this cut is great, you know, to, to give the passer some vision to make yourself available. She's making herself available in a, in a dangerous space with her hands ready, ready to make the play. The other thing is, is, is we don't know, maybe this weak side offensive player is a non-shooter. Maybe the best thing for this person to do is to cut to the rim to try to finish, to, try to create a play for somebody else. Maybe it's not to catch and shoot, or shoot an open shot. Sometimes the defense leaves you open on purpose. On the purpose right? Double off of. Right, because that's what they want you to do. They want you to shoot it. So, uh, you know, knowing your skills, KMS, know my skills, is obviously very important here. I'm not saying that that's the situation here, but it could be for a lot of players um, in a situation such as this, which is why this makes it a really, really great cut. And also, you know, if you think about attacking the defense, right? This is two body shots immediately by the offense, right? They put it into the post. It draws five eyes, five sets of eyes pre-catch. On the catch, it gets a double borderline triple team with the soft hedge from the top ball side. So that's a body shot, right? Defense is kind of contracted. Right. Well, here comes a vacuum cut, meaning she just followed her man that went double right into the heart of the defense. Body shot again, right? Now look at the defense contracted again. All five eye sets of eyes there defense contracted body shot look how easy this is now right now this is a shot you know you want because this player you had holding gravity from the very very beginning therefore you know she's a capable shooter right it's, again it's just it's amazing because this player that's in the corner that's about to get the shot again didn't do anything the entire possession except be patient and read the action which again i think is something that young players have a, a, a tough time doing a lot of people want to run towards the basketball they want to move just for the sake of moving with it, other than thinking the game, being patient, and seeing what the best course of action will be just in terms of slight movement. The other thing I wanted to point here is when you get to the paint, you mentioned it being a body shot. Every defense in America, or not in just America, every defense in the world, in the game of basketball, international basketball, professional level, in the NBA, the WNBA, college, division one, two, three, NAI, JUCO, all the way down to high school, middle school, nobody, no coaches ever say, when the other team gets into the paint, I want all five of you to look at the basketball and go make a play on the ball. Nobody ever said that. Nobody, that's that's not what's taught in defense. Yet, Ed, you and I know that is human nature, that every time the ball gets in a dangerous spot, whether it's via the dribble, whether it's via the pass, offensive rebound, whatever it is, anytime the ball gets into a dangerous spot such as this, all five people on defense, it's a human nature thing for them to stop, turn, look at the basketball, and that's what her advantage can always get created by. And this is just such a good example of it right here. Yeah, that's just spot on, Matt. I mean, the closer the ball is to the rim, the more the defense cares about it. Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just basics, right? And, and the better you are as a player, right? A player that can't hurt you from 30 feet can hurt you from three feet. So it's just, you know, like you said, nature. Human nature, right? And look, and look at this shot, right? And guys, this is why, you know, we're spending so many of these clips on advantage because that's the whole point of the game. And Matt made such a great point on one of our other episodes about coaches can't draw up this kind of look, right? Like schematically, because you can switch a screen, you can, you know, kind of deal with, you know, action. You can scheme against a play. This isn't a play. This is just, we got an advantage. We used it to create another advantage, to create another advantage that the defense just couldn't over, couldn't keep up with in terms of rotation or communication, clean shot. Right, so this is just basketball, honestly, in its most pure form. When we watch it again in fast motion, it, it's amazing how much we just talked about that happened in a four-second segment, but how quick the game moves, but how much intricacy there is involved, you know, in such a short period of time. Yeah. And what Matt, great players do—they make quick decisions.